What's up guys, Super Golden Key here, coming at you with another re figure review. So today we are going to be taking a look at the Bandai Tamashii Nation's SH Figure Arts Piccolo. This is the original version, not the premium color edition. So, before we take a look at the figure itself, let's take a look at the packaging. So, uh, here you have the window where you can see the figure from the top and front of the box. You have Piccolo's face right here. Uh, goes to the both sides of the box. Here you can see it says Piccolo, um, SH Figure Arts, all the basic stuff that SH Figure Arts boxes have. And, um... I don't know why, but underneath, um, well, you can see right there that there's just a Dragon Ball Z logo slapped onto the front of this thing, and um, underneath it is a Dragon Ball Kai. You can see it on the back right here, a little gray, black and white Dragon Ball Kai thing. So, neat, I guess? I don't know. Uh, sides of the box, you have Piccolo. It says Piccolo uh, on the front, um, on the back. Back um, is pictures, promo pictures of Piccolo, him doing this special beam cannon. Here he is crossing his arms, being like Piccolo, and there he is wearing his turban and cape or cloak. And then there's a bunch of Japanese stuff that I can't read. And uh, that's pretty much it for the box. Now let's get into the figure. So just for starters, the painting and sculpting on this figure is very nice. He, his colors are a lot darker on the camera than it is in real life. Um, the antenna are made of a soft rubbery plastic so you don't have to worry about getting those broken. But still, be a little careful when, it, when um, posing his head. You don't want to break those off. So you know, you may notice that his arm things are yellow instead of pink, like they typically are in most of his depictions. This is because this is his original manga coloring. So originally he was supposed to have yellow arms, but they ended up being pink when they colored them for the TV show. But, um, I actually think it looks kind of nice. Kind of a thing right here is there's a gap between his crotch and his leg. And I can't get that gap to close up. Uh, that's just a minor problem. And uh, also another thing that his uh, manga color had was, I'm pretty sure his um, waistband is typically blue. But here it is red. Um, but again, I, th I still think it looks very nice. So um, overall, uh, looks very, very, very nice looking. You can see that they even did little details um, right there where his. If he wore socks, that's where they would be. So now let's get into the accessories. So starting off with accessories, let's take a look at his uh, cloak. So. Um, the sculpting on the cloak is very nice. Um, it is made out of a soft rubbery plastic as to not have to worry so much about breaking. Um, you can't really see it all too well uh, from the camera, but there is very subtle hints of blue shading and they just make it look very nice. It, it's kind of difficult to get on sometimes, but um, we'll get to that later. So the cloak overall I think looks really good. But the cloak actually comes with a secondary piece. So you see right here, um, there is the front part which detaches. And this is to uh, accommodate his crossed arm pose. So you have the normal one and then you have the crossed arm one. So the normal one is just fully length. This one is shorter and has different spots cut out from it to accommodate his crossed arms and you can see that um, in pictures and stuff so speaking of crossed arms 
here are his crossed arms. And um, they look very nice. They definitely look like cross arms, how they should be. Um, again, a little bit difficult to get on, but uh, with some finesse, you can kind of kind of get it to look natural. Um, we'll get to that in a little bit. But um, yeah, I mean, they're basically just crossed arms. Now we'll move on to the alternate heads and hands. So aside from his normal head, here, which is just a very stern, normal looking piccolo head. We also have a angry looking to the side piccolo head. And you can see some veins in his head. Like he's, I don't know, charging up something or very constipated. You can choose which. And then he comes with his turban head. Uh, which again has that normal, just blank piccolo expression. And, uh, turban looks very nice. And, uh, those are his alternate heads. Now we'll move on to his hands. So, he comes with two, um, just normal fists, two open palm hands, two veiny grabbing hands, and one special beam cannon hand. And that pretty much does it for accessories. Now we'll take a look at articulation. Ball joint at the head, you can look up that far and down that far. The neck is also on a joint and can move forwards and backwards. The arms can do a 360 and can move out that far. The sleeves are on a ball joint. The arm's also a little too loose for my liking. Swivel, bend at the elbow. Wrist is on an infinite joint. Crunch, arc, swivel, kick forward, kick back. Knee, ball joint, up, down at the tail. And that pretty much does it for articulation. Now we'll take a look at how to put together his accessories. The wrists are ball joint, so you can just pop the hands off and pop them back on. For his turban, what you're going to want to do is take his head off, and then you're going to want to take um, whichever of the two parts of the turban you want, either one for the crossed arms or the normal arms. Uh, we're going to do the crossed arms. Just put that over his neck and onto his shoulders, kind of jiggle it around a little bit just to make sure it's fitting, and then um, put on whichever head you, whichever head you want, uh, preferably the turban head for the arms. You're just going to want to take the part where it swivels and just take that part off. And then you're going to want to take the crossed arms, make sure they're facing the right direction, plug it in to each arm, and once you have them more or less in there, then you can get him in different, different poses using the different accessories. Here he is next to the Awoken Super Saiyan Goku. A little bit taller, as he should be. Here he is next to a Shoto Neo Super Saiyan Vegito. And just because here he is next to a Rubik's Cube. So overall, I'd say that this is a pretty good figure. A couple nitpicks here and there due to the looseness of joints, but I'm sure I can figure out some way to fix that. And uh... I don't know, something about it just feels kind of off to me. But, um, still definitely a good figure to add to, add to your collection if you are a Piccolo fan, or if you're just a fan of DBZ or SH Figure Arts figures. So, I think that's going to about wrap up this figure review here. If you enjoyed this video, 
uh, feel free to check out my other figure reviews. I also do gaming videos and stop motions. So long.